Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a closer look at the orbital inclination. And it's actually a little bit more complicated than we think because there's several reference planes that we use in astronomy. The first one, the most common one to most people, is the ecliptic plane. The ecliptic plane is the plane that's formed by the Earth's orbit around the Sun. And typically we compare the orbital inclination of all the other planets relative to the orbital inclination of the Earth around the Sun. That means relative to the ecliptic. And if we take a look at Jupiter, we can see that the orbital inclination between the ecliptic and Jupiter is 1.3 degrees, essentially. But then there's a second reference plane, which is called the invariable plane. That plane is also called Laplace's invariable plane. And what it means is that that's a plane drawn through essentially the center of mass of the planets, the direction of center mass of the planets going around the sun. In other words, it's the plane through the very center. So because all the planets are in various locations and some of them are above the ecliptic, some of them are below the ecliptic, but at the same time, at any moment in time, the angle through the very center of all the planets put together is always in the very same place. And that's why they called it the invariable plane. And that plane happens to be 0.32 degrees, almost a third of a degree below the ecliptic. And so the, the angular distance from Jupiter to the stationary or invariable plane is 1.63 degrees. Then there's a third reference point, which is the sun's equatorial plane, the equator of the sun, and that's the sun spins around its axis in the direction that the sun's equatorial plane is perpendicular to that rotational motion of the sun. Relative to that plane, the orbit of Jupiter is 6.09 degrees away from that. And you can see that the, the Earth, therefore, will be slightly over 7 degrees away from that equatorial plane of the sun. So we, we typically have just the, um, what we call the ecliptic plane as a reference point, but also we use the plane through the bare center, the invariable plane, and sometimes we also look at the sun's equatorial plane. The reason why we want to use all that, all those, is because we try to understand the orbital motion of all the planets, including that one of Jupiter, relative to the formation of the solar system and the motion of the sun, as well as the motion of the, all the other planets. So you can see that there does seem to be sometimes some discrepancy between the orbital motion of the, of the sun, the direction of the axis about which it rotates, versus the orbital motion of the planets. And we need to explain those, and that's why at least we want to have the ability to draw that reference point between the various planes. And that is how we can then tell what the direction of motion is relative to the ecliptic plane, the invariable plane, and the sun's equator in the motion of Jupiter. How do you decide the sun's equator? <laughs> well, we can actually watch the, the sunspots move around the sun over time. The sun makes one rotation at its center about once every 25 days near the poles once every 30 days. And when we move, when we watch that rotation of the, of the sunspots on the sun, we can see that relative to where we are, uh, they don't happen at exactly the motion that looks like that. It looks more like it's at an angle. We're able to calculate that angle, and that's why we end up with the sun's equator. Yes, because the sunspot is, is located at a specific spot in the sun. It doesn't move a lot. It does move over time. The sunspot over time, but that's over many years period, tend to move towards the equator as they develop. Um, and then they tend to disappear and then they tend to reappear. But for any one specific sunspot, they pretty well stay within a circular path around the, um, around the, the sun's surface. Yeah. 